The Beatles' I'm So Tired, from the White Album, written by resident sleepyhead John Lennon, depicts his insomnia sleepless evenings as he begs for a good night's slumber's relief. But the song has more to do with it than meets your bedroom eyes. Today we'll show you who John wanted to call, what was keeping him up, and why John Lennon was so mad for his bed. This is the Holly Hub's 10 interesting facts about the Beatles' I'm So Tired. If John was dreaming of the past, I imagine he would recognize how sleep-obsessed he really was. In songs like I'm So Tired and I'm Only Sleeping, to protest movements where he wouldn't even have to get out of bed. Whatever gets you through the night, right? Even Give Peace a Chance was one of the very few songs to be actually recorded in bed. John's desires to lay languidly upon a mattress was witnessed by others throughout his life. Friend and journalist Maureen Cleave mentions, he can sleep almost indefinitely. John corroborates this accusation of narcolepsy by saying, physically lazy. I don't mind writing or reading or watching or speaking, but sex is the only physical thing I can be bothered with anymore. Like many of John Lennon's most existential songs, I'm So Tired found its birthplace in India while the Beatles were studying transcendental meditation with Maharishi. Now often glossed over in this part of the Beatles' adventure is the fact that they were young men in their 20s who so happened to be financially humble Liverpudlians who were now flush with cash. So they partied, they drank, smoked, snorted, and dropped. But evidently, transcendental meditation is its own hallucinogenic of the mind's creation, and the Maharishi had explicitly banned such behavior while attending the spiritual guidance. Now many of these illicit substances are great aids for getting to bed, and once ripped away and coupled with the fact that they'd be sitting, eyes closed, meditating for hours on end, and then now a new task from the Maharishi was to stay in the same room alone for five days, of course that's a ton to get used to, and John had trouble sleeping. Honestly, between John's insomnia and Ringo's Indian food intolerance, that trip kind of sounds like a drag. John says, I wrote it in India. I couldn't sleep. I'd been meditating all day, and then I couldn't sleep at night. We were not supposed to leave the room because of this thing about staying in one room for five days. So I was so tired, I couldn't get to sleep. That's it. I'm so tired. I don't know what to do. I'm so tired. My mind is set on you. I wonder, should I call you? But I know what you would do. You'd say, I'm putting you on. But it's no joke. It's doing me harm. There's only one woman John says he wanted to call, and that is his future wife, Yoko Ono. He had just met her before his trip to India, and John was in love with her, even remarking on Yoko and Julia as well, a song titled after his own mother. Yoko had arrived, and John was very much into her. At this time period, John was actually in India with his current wife, Cynthia, but he said he believed Yoko was his kindred spirit, his soulmate, and he desperately wished he could have just brought Yoko along if not for the obvious harm it would cause Cynthia. Cynthia. This intensity was all before they even began their affair with one another. And I have to imagine, this is why these songs became so powerful. John always told the truth and made it rhyme, but now he was in love for the very first time, and he couldn't be with her. That longing made for some incredible music. So of course, as an American discussing a British band, there undoubtedly will be tons of new words I must learn, and much like when you first attempt to learn another language, one must always start with curse words and insults. In the line, and curse Sir Walter Raleigh, he was such a stupid git. Git invoked the old Scots word get, which is to mean bastard. When the insult traveled south of the border, it became a bit softer from get to git. But who was Walter Raleigh and why was he such a bastard? Well, Sir Walter Raleigh was the man known for popularizing tobacco in England. He brought Virginian tobacco from America in the 16th century, and John called him the aforementioned get, because this is how they pronounce get in Liverpool, closer to the original way of saying it. Also, get rhymes with cigarette better than get. I feel like I'm saying get a lot. I hope it isn't as bad as f YouTube's gonna f me with an un ad friendly strike or something. Anyway, John was addicted to cigarettes, as were all of the Beatles and a lot more people back then. I used to smoke for like 10 years. Seriously, do whatever you like, but smoking really does suck and it feels impossible to quit. So if you hadn't had a ciggy before, just keep doing what you're doing. Trust me. 
One annoying symptom of nicotine use is being that it is a stimulant. It keeps you from falling asleep and thus contributed to John's insomnia. So he was literally so fed up with the poison of smoking that he calls Sir Walter Raleigh a stupid bastard in a song. And you know what? I get it. I get it. Remember in our Here, There, and Everywhere video where Paul McCartney said he tries to emulate different singers to give his songs a different voicing? Well, that wasn't just Paul. For I'm So Tired, John enlisted the help of the one and only Smokey Robinson. At the top of his handwritten lyrics page, John wrote, Smokey then, heavy voice. John idolized Smokey and wanted the verses of this song to sound like him. Listen to these two clips and see if you can gather what John was going for. So I get a lot of people yelling at me that Paul is dead and a doppelganger, yada, yada, yada. At first I thought people were just joking around, but now I kind of feel like they're serious and well, okay. But in my endless desire to stoke the conspiracy fire, here's another one for you all. On one of the tracks, John begins to mumble gibberish whenever there was a break in the music. Weird, because there isn't a lot of examples of him doing that. Not sure if he was intending for it to be on the record. During recording, the mumbling heard is said to be John saying, Monsieur, Monsieur, how about another one? Probably John asking to have another go at a take. But once it was released, and the Paul is Dead rumor started taking off in the late 60s, fans played the mumbling backwards, and well, you get this. In 1969, a nice little trivia bit about the song occurred when rehearsing at the Twickenham Film Studios in London for the Let It Be movie. The Beatles broke into a jolly rendition of I'm So Tired with Paul singing lead, imitating John's voice and mumbling. And it's pretty hilarious if I'm being honest. And get myself a drink. No, no, no. No. Lay off the booze, boy. Cause I'm so very quickly, John recorded a demo version of I'm So Tired at George Harrison's house in Surrey in 1968 on his Ampex 4-track machine. This was a very important session because the Beatles actually met deliberately on that day to record loads of demos in preparation for the official recordings at EMI Studios a few days later. This is a clip from that demo. Two, three, four, I'm so tired John was a very progressive songwriter, especially when it came to his chord progressions. A Day in the Life comes to mind as one of the most ingenious use of chords in rock music, but I have the strange feeling John really loved a specific chord progression as he used it thematically. I call it the doo-wop chord progression. So musically, the chord progression is usually one, six, four, five. So you'd get big doo-wop top classics like Blue Moon. Blue Moon. You saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own And John used that progression loads of times. For instance, this boy. That boy Took my love away Again. Even happiness is a warm gun. Happiness is a warm gun, mama. Happiness is a warm gun, yes it is. Happiness is a warm, yes it is. And so now, hearing all that evidence, check out I'm So Tired, but see that John, because he's John Lennon, added in a cheeky flat chord for the second position in the progression, for what I think is a groovy feeling of falling, perhaps asleep. I wonder, should I call you, but I know what you would do. In 
It isn't any secret John openly loved only a few Beatles songs. When we first heard that fact, we were all probably a little let down that the man who brought us so many incredible songs didn't like them as much as we did. I think that's where a lot of the Beatles' charm comes from. Remember, George Martin didn't sign them because he liked their music. He signed them when no one else would because he liked them as people. John was always honest. He said he had slapped Cynthia, even though the patriarchy didn't really care back then, and dreadful men got away with way worse. He was jealous and possessive, and he said that time and time again. And of course, he was deeply insecure. But before anyone asked him to, he made the moves to better himself. So this next quote from the guy who wanted to use every last trick in the recording studio to mask his own voice, a voice he thought should be hidden, this next quote I find simply perfect. John says, I'm so tired was me in India again. I couldn't sleep. I'm meditating all day and couldn't sleep at night. The story is that, one of my favorite tracks. I just like the sound of it and I sing it well. Okay, well that's it for today's episode. I love you all very much and be sure to click the join tab here to get a bunch of awesome content you can't get anywhere else. It's a community we call the Cavern Club and it's tons of fun. See you there.